you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. And doubt. How can I fight fear and doubt? Well, in James chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. How do you resist the devil? You stand your ground on God's word. So you got to know the word of God first and stand on it. That means put your faith in God's word. Stand on God's word. Now, fear actually is trusting in the ability of your adversary or in the ability of your enemy or in the, in the potentiality of all that's negative against you that's what fear is it means you trust everything else that can make you fail or that can destroy you 
You trust in the negative. Don't trust the ability of your enemy. Trust in God. Now, trust in God is faith. Faith in his word. Trust in the ability of your enemy or your adversary or in adversity is fear. That's what produces fear. You know, the more you hear about um, destructive situations or negative circumstances, adverse circumstances, the more you hear of them, the more faith you have in the ability to accomplish their purposes. And that produces fear in you. A lack of confidence in yourself. A lack of confidence in God's presence. A lack of confidence in God's love. Now to deal with that, you need to hear God's word. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, it says, we walk by faith and not by sensory perception, not by sight. See, and then the Bible says, while we look not, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So our faith must be on those things that are not seen by the optical eyes. Then again, there's something very important that I'd like to read to you from 1st John chapter 5 from verse 3 for this is the love of God that we keep his commandment and his commandments are not grievous for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith he says this is the love of God that we keep his word we keep his commandments. Now the commandments here don't refer to the commandments of Moses, but the instructions given to us in the New Testament. It's about his commandments, his instructions that he's given to us. His word, that is. And so, the love of God is proved by keeping his word. And then he says, his commandments are not grievous. And then secondly, he says, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And that this is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith. No matter what you hear, no matter what produces fear in your life, faith, our faith overcomes the world. Our faith overcomes the world. It says this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Lastly, there's a, a, another scripture I want to read to you. First, the same first uh, epistle of John, chapter 4, but this time in verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If you love God, you prove it by doing his word. You do whatever he's told you to do in his word. That's the proof that you love God. You don't, you, you don't, um, you don't say you love God just because of an emotion in your heart. You prove it in your action. Then it says this, there is no fear. That's verse 18, chapter 4, 1 John. There is no fear in love. If you love God, and you know that He loves you, because He says in the 19th verse, we love Him because He first loved us. So there's a reciprocal love here. He loves you, and then you love Him. So He says here, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear. Perfect love. So, here, if you, are, if you live in fear, you are not perfected in love. That's what he says. There is no fear in love. But he that feareth is not made perfect in love. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Because there is no fear in love. I read that 18 verse again to you. It says, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casted out fear. So you don't really have to fight fear. You don't have to fight doubt. He says, perfect love casted out fear. No need for an effort on your part. If you will walk in love, trust in God's love, and love Him, you'll have no fear. That's what he says. Perfect love. And that perfect love is proved in your life as you walk in His Word. That's what we read uh, in the third verse of the fifth chapter. It says, for this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not grievous. There is no fear in love, 
For perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Same thing with doubt. Your doubts drown. Your doubts flee from you when you increase your faith in God's word. And to increase your faith in God's word is to hear God's word. God's word produces faith. This faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more of God's words you hear, the more faith comes to you. And then your doubts are dissipated. So faith is what you need. That my father was saved before he passed away. Can we pray for our loved ones who are already dead? No. When someone is already dead, he's already dead and they can't add to their life or take out of their life. Once one is dead, that's it. You, you can't pray to change that person's life. You can't pray to add or remove from it. So the record is, is sealed and that's it. Because it's about life on earth, you see. So that's it. questions lots and lots of questions all right there's a there's a gentleman from Nigeria well, this is a gentleman or a girl love is the name dear pastor how do you deal with a curse that you know exists in your family now that you're born again and it appears as though the curse is working on you if you're born if you're born again the curse should not work on you no if any man being Christ is a new creation all things are passed when all things are become new so and in fact, there's a key word there, he says, behold, all things have become new. So he wants you to see that all things have become new and stop seeing the curse working in your life. The curse cannot work on you, except you let it. When you're born again, you are no longer, uh, as it were, from the root of that family in the earth. So whatever they suffer, you shouldn't suffer. You're now there to be a blessing. Okay? So you're a blessing in your family. You shouldn't be... You shouldn't be going through the same things that they're going through. No. God wants to use you to bless the family. So you become a blessing. So if there's a curse, you lift the curse with the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Are horoscopes true? No, they're not. They're not true. Those are, you know, horoscopes are human in satanic imaginations. So you don't need them. You know, they're not based on the Word of God. If they're based on the Word of God, they will be true, but they're not God's word. And, and the Bible actually warns against them. If you if you study in the Old Testament several times, it talked about stargazers and all of this. He says, um, God's children shouldn't do that. So don't follow the horoscopes. They are satanic speculations. <laughs> Go to heaven, Reverend Ray. <laughs> um, you know, when you look at suicide, um, you want to know, uh, is the person, was there a, a sickness? Is this something, you know, so the body is, can be sick, the mind can be sick also. Is it out of um, um, maybe a torment or is it just a willful act? So you need to know under which circumstances that happened uh, because it's, there's no one word answer to it, Pastor. Mm -hmm. You have to be sure what led to what it. What led to it, sir. Yeah. And it's that thing that led to it that may determine whether or not that fellow is going to heaven. Yes, sir. You see. So um, fear could have led to it. Unbelief could have led to it. And the Bible says the fearful and the unbelieving will go to hell. Yes. So the lake of fire, really. So it's important that you know what led to that 
attempt or to that um, uh, suicide. So, yeah, they will either go to heaven or go to hell, depending on these factors we just raised. One of the beneficiaries of your ministry, I love you so much. Please explain how Satan can delay my blessings. Satan can only influence whatever is yours or even influence your life when you let him. It's the permission you give him. So if you give him a leeway in your life, he'll do something. See, because he's always watching out to take advantage of every situation, take advantage of every opportunity you give to him. But as for him uh, taking a stand to delay your blessings, the blessings didn't come from him. From him, how could he delay your blessings? They don't come from Satan. They don't originate from him. So it's not about Satan delaying your blessings. I think it's more what you should be thinking about is Satan delaying you by putting obstacles in your way, delaying you from appropriating your blessings in your life. So it's more about the obstacles that he puts in your, in your way. And you can identify those obstacles through the power of the Spirit of God, through your knowledge of the Word of God, and then you act on God's Word and learn to function by the Spirit. That's why you receive the Holy Ghost, so He can lead you to live a spiritual life, a Spirit-led life. Going through hard times for a long time, Will it pass? It could pass if you make it pass. Sometimes we need to realize that we have a responsibility to these things. Now we have a catalog of uh, several of our messages and we have treated things like this. How do you change a situation that's so bad and it's been there for a long time? How can you walk your way out of a mess like this? So if you would look through the catalog of our messages, um, you can order for any one of them that will answer your question in a deeper form, which means that you would need to hear the word over and over again and have your faith built so exactly, you know exactly what to do. For example, the book, our book titled How to Make Your Faith Work is one of those materials I'd like to recommend. How to make your faith work. Because you have faith, but you want to make it work. You want to do something, you want to change the situation. Can you change it? Emphatically, yes. How to get married without being blessed by your pastor? Well, if you, if you belong to a church, which you should, why would you want to get married without letting your pastor know? Even in a large church where it might be difficult for every member to get to the pastor, there are leaders, there are structures. So the, if you use those structures, somehow the pastor will get to know. If he doesn't know personally, through the structure, the leadership will be aware. And um, you can have God's blessings on that. So it's important. It's important. So don't go ahead and get married without the church knowing it's not right. And I want to know if I should still continue to receive my child's maintenance from his father, who is a drug lord. <laughs> Every <Evan Ray. laughs> Uh, firstly, every parent has responsibility to children, and uh, I mean, it's God ordained. It's what God has uh, ordained to be done. Um, if you, first of all, are you living together, the man and the woman, and both of you living together as husband and wife? But from the way you ask the question, it doesn't look like he said, My child's father, he didn't say, My husband, and that means probably you're not living together. And you know, if um, what kind of influence would you like to have on your child? The father, um, 
how much access does it have to the child? If the child is uh, being supported by the father and he has that influence over him, which you may not like and don't want, you then uh, if you continue to allow that support, they're going to have that influence. But then he's the father. He has to have access to the child. <laughs> and I don't really think anything is wrong with that because you, as a father, you should have a relationship, I mean, uh, responsibility towards the child. It's Absolutely. It should have Absolutely. that. And um, I think what's really troubling, what's really troubling Sally is that um, she says the father is a drug lord, meaning that he's probably um, a, a drug dealer of some kind. Now, um, here's what I've got to say. Does it mean all the money he ever gets comes from drugs? All the money he ever gets? Everything he ever gets comes from drugs? That may not necessarily be. And um, it will not be in your place to ask him, where did you get this particular amount of money from? Where did you? What about the ones given to him by his friends or something? There's things like that that happen. So the best thing is, being that this is the father of the child, it's up to him to send money to the child. It's his responsibility. It's his responsibility to do that. And if he's, if he's dealing on drugs, the law may get him some time. But you see, that wouldn't be your problem. But I'll advise you, keep in a sitting for him and praying for him praying for his salvation, praying for a change of heart. So you don't have any problem uh, receiving maintenance money from him for, uh, for his child, but you've got to talk to him about Jesus. See, that's, that's the connection. You, you, you can talk to him about Jesus because you can't stop him from sending money to the child. Somehow or another, he'll do it. And the child will be growing up and one day look out for the father. So. Your own part will be to bring the Word of God to Him, and uh, that could change His life. This friend will be moving away to Taiwan, so I decided to make new close friends so I won't be lonely when she leaves. I don't really know how to make good close friends, though. What would Jesus do? What does it say in the Bible about how to make close friends? Well, Susan, the, the first thing you've got to do if you want to make close friends is to stand from a position of advantage by having a strong character, which means you're not, you're not going to be um, like, oh, I'm in need. I'm lonely, I need a friend, because if you're that way, it means you're vulnerable. And that means you're going to get friends who have a much stronger characters than yourself, and you're going to be dependent on them and probably be sorry at the end. Because at this time, you seem to need some close friends. So what are you going to do? Be the strong character, because that's what God wants you to be. See, always he wants us to be the head and not the tail. Always he wants us to be the influential ones in every relationship, in our friendships, so that we can help others know how to serve God. See, because always he makes us his witnesses. So remember that. So the first thing you're going to do is look out for those who you can share the word of God with and help them to know Jesus. Now, those who accept your message automatically become your friends. Secondly, there are those who already know the Lord and love the Lord like you do. They'll be your friends. So you, you can do the same kind of things together that the Lord approves of. And this kind of fellowship, of friendship that um, builds your spirit and encourages your way of life in Christ will surely strengthen you even more and you discover you got good friends because we will always have good friends in Christ but we must be sure 
to let the word of God guide our actions all the time. So the gospel is always your best way of making close friends because it will help you determine those who love the Lord, whether they are new to Christ or they have been in Christ. It will always be the best way. Watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. the gift of faith did God create hell does God love everyone equally and you didn't pick any of those you picked the 
the last one here the practice of yoga it is said that yoga is about self-awareness and discovering the divine within creating a strong sense of self and of humankind yoga classes are popular across western countries and are often passed as a form of exercise some are of the opinion that yoga is more of a religious or spiritual exercise than a physical one is there any biblical backing for yoga well um, yoga is actually a Hindu is based on the Hindu doctrine of some kind of uh, meditation that is achieved through the discipline of the mind and the body and then you try to uh, uh, concentrate in such a way as to project yourself spiritually and become sensitive spiritually the Bible tells us what to do the Bible tells us about meditation and in meditation he doesn't tell you that um, you should he doesn't tell you about the condition of your physical body even though all of that matters but it's not yoga the yoga here is misleading and I'll tell you why it's misleading it is true that you could you could sit down calm yourself um, make sure you discipline your mind and try to be quiet to meditate all that can help your meditation for sure but the point about yoga is this it is not Christian because it leads from one thing to another for example in every religion people pray so if you asked me is prayer okay I would say prayer is okay but it matters who you're praying to you see and by whose name you're praying so it's not just whether prayer is all right so when you say yoga the very name yoga comes from the Hindu doctrine they gave it that name so it comes from the Hindu, Hindu doctrine why didn't you say is anything wrong with exercise why didn't you say is anything wrong with prayer meditation spirituality you chose the word yoga which comes from Hindu uh, doctrine now am I saying something's wrong with the Hindu doctrine the point is there is no other name under heaven whereby men should be saved except the name of Jesus Christ that's what the Bible says it says I am the way the truth and the life so if you talk about prayer if you talk about meditation if you talk about anything it should be consistent with what Christ has given us either directly or through his apostles or prophets in the Bible so the yoga style is a Hindu style and no Christian has any reason to do it that way so do it God's way and you get the benefits from God's Word Pastor Chris, I just want to find out how to overcome arrogance with God's help. I've been seen as arrogant and would like to dismiss it from my life and personality. Now that's beautiful. I think um, the very fact that you want to get rid of it is the beginning of your victory over it. But here, I'll read God's word to you, beginning with James chapter 1 from verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Be ye doers of the word. Doers of the word. In other words, God wants us to act his word. Act his word. Do his word. Be what he says we are. Act that way. Whatever he calls us, we answer and act that way. Okay. Now, Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor 
walk in love now the key the key to this is walking in love if you walk in love you cannot at the same time be arrogant see if you walk in love you cannot at the same time be arrogant so learn to walk in love that's the beginning now I'm gonna to read to you from Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22 but the fruit of the Spirit is love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law he says the fruit of the Spirit that means the product of the recreated human spirit is not talking about the Spirit of God He's talking about the human spirit the born again spirit. when you're born again there are certain things that come packaged in your spirit. These are now natural to you. The new life that you have in Christ. And it gives us a list. It says the fruit of the spirit is love. It begins with love. So you got love inside you. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no love. Now, to be arrogant is to walk in the flesh let me read that to you if you go upward to verse 19 the same chapter the same book it says now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations strife seditions heresies envies murders drunkenness revelings and such like of which i tell you before as i've told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God see that so arrogance is of the flesh and the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is different so you can walk in love and walk in joy and in peace and be long-suffering and be gentle with goodness faith meekness temperance so all of this you can cultivate in your spirit because they're already in your spirit. Now you can groom them by walking in love. Walking in love. So from today, declare that there's no arrogance in your spirit. You say to yourself, I have no arrogance. I refuse to be arrogant. I will not be arrogant, but I will walk in love. I will walk in love. And you decide that and you will see the results in your life. To respond when accused of something we didn't do is it good to keep silent in such situations well it depends on who your accusers are if your accusers are honest in their search for uh, the real offender and they accuse you because of genuine evidence even though they are wrong then you may take the time or the opportunity given to you to express yourself and explain to them that you are not the culprit but then a lot of times there are dishonest accusers accusers who really are not looking for the, the culprit but just want to give you a bad name and in such circumstances you probably don't need to say anything because it wouldn't mean anything anyway that's why Jesus was quiet when they asked him several questions because he knew his accusers were not honest. They, was, they were dishonest accusers. So it depends on who your accusers are. If they want real answers, good answers, honest answers, you can go ahead and talk to them. Otherwise, it might be better to be quiet. Gerald, I'm 18 years old and I'm from Florida. I need help. I feel like nobody listens to me. I'm stressed out every day and I use weed to get rid of stress. I know it's bad, but it gets rid of my stress. I have a mother that doesn't listen to me. She yells at me every day to a point that I think 
I might do something crazy one day. What should I do? Now, um, from what you've said, you feel like nobody listens to you. I have a question for you. Do you listen to anybody? Because you feel like nobody listens to you. What about listening to somebody? You said your mom doesn't listen to you. She yells at you every day. To the point that you think that one day you might just do something crazy. Have you thought about listening to her at least for once? It might make a big difference. Because it's very rare for a mother to hate or reject her own son. It's very rare. Some do it, yeah, but it's rare. It's unlikely that your mother doesn't want you or doesn't love you. Maybe you should consider listening to her for once. Because she might just be thinking you don't want to listen to her. After all, if you think you're not doing anything wrong, you've mentioned at least one thing that you're doing wrong. And if you're doing one thing wrong, the mind that gave you that guidance to do that one thing wrong may have led you in many other wrong things. So why don't you consider listening to your mother at least for once and see where the difference might be. I would like to send you some materials that will help your faith because you need to develop your personal faith. You're 18 years old. And at 18, you should start thinking of being very independent and being uh, financially uh, responsible so, and socially responsible. So I'm going to send you some materials that will help you build yourself, build your mind, build your spirit, and become uh, spiritually stalwart, mentally balanced, and projecting yourself in the direction of the future you should be going in. So I'd like you to send me your personal address. So I can mail those things by courier to you. I'd love to do that for you. It really affected my work. I am viewed as the lazy teacher. And you cannot imagine the pain it causes. I've gone to a psychiatrist and everywhere. But my condition is not treated. So I am asking that you plead with me for the hand of God to touch me. I am burning and I'm even contemplating suicide. No, you don't have to contemplate suicide. The word is so important. Let me make this clear to you. The primary reason we're doing this, answering questions on the internet like this, is to help bring the word of God to you that will strengthen you, encourage you, and direct you. So if you would listen to the word, it will bring you help. Some of the things we have to share with others um, regarding their questions could be very helpful to you as well. And then plus that, get our Rhapsody of Realities, a daily devotional guide. Because if you've been in this condition for 10 years, chances are you've created a, a, a mentality by now that will be very difficult for you to deal with. But through the word of God, as a, a cleansing agency and an agent of change, something good will take place in your life so um place your order for the rhapsody of realities we do have some free distribution and i believe that in your area we have uh copies of rhapsody of, of realities coming to your country we do have in your country so ask today for the one for this month so every day there's something new from the word of god that we are sharing there's an article there for the day there's a portion of the bible for you to study and these will minister to your needs in a special way. And I can guarantee that if you will do that consistently for three months, this will be an old story. So meditate on the word. That's what you're going to do. Of course, you know, apart from that, we pray for people. And through prayer, the depression can leave. But if you want the answer to, to remain, you want um, to maintain that freedom in your mind, the liberty of your spirit, you've got to focus on the word. Otherwise, even after prayer, the problem can come back. See? So, no matter what we're healed of, no matter what we're, we're free from, we must always stay in the word of God consistently 
to maintain the kind of life that God wants us to live. And that's why I'm suggesting to you that you get Rhapsody of Realities quickly too. And to get a higher education after primary school, especially since Jesus Christ is the wisdom and knowledge of God. And therefore, those in union with Christ have access to that knowledge. Yes, they have access to that knowledge, but um, <laughs> uh, the higher education you're talking about, all of this is based on um, the arrangement of our society, the structure of our society. Don't forget that many years ago, this formal education wasn't even there. But it's been structured to give everyone an opportunity to learn something. For example, I'm speaking English to you right now. And these words had to be learned in school. You see, the more I read, the more I understood the language. And if I wanted to speak French, I would have to learn French. See, so our communication with human beings is also based on this improved knowledge. In the knowledge of our environment and some people know better than others like I'm educating you now through the Word of God and the same thing in the sciences in history you've got to learn some information see you've got to learn and that's the reason for going to school and in school there are different levels you can't know everything at once so after a certain level you go for more education and there's more to learn at a higher level and God also helps you learn like this. The Bible does tell us about the school of the prophets. Many years ago, Elijah was uh, a head of such a school. He had several prophets under him. Okay? The Levites were in a school for the Levites. The priests taught them, and they taught the people in turn. See, so um, this, is, this is important. So if you have to go to school for some higher education, it is desirable. It is desirable. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Since the inception of Pastor Chris Online, I have not missed any volume. And all my innermost questions have been answered. My question is, as Christians, the Bible says if we sin, we have the grace to obtain forgiveness. If we do sin and ask for God's forgiveness, do we still bear the consequences or repercussions of the sin? Thank you. Well, it depends on what kind of sin it is. You know, we have, there are sins against God and there are sins against men. And um, if you sin against God, he'll forgive you. But men don't always forgive. For example, if you stole something, God will forgive you. But the law may not forgive you. You may be taken to court. You may be found guilty and even put in prison. Now, those are the consequences of your sin. But this time, it's a breach against the law. So you have to understand, it depends on the sin. From God's side, he holds nothing against you anymore. But, you know, man has a different, uh, a different standard. So it depends on what kind of sin you're talking about. If it offended a human being, he may not let you go, even though... God lets you go. But men have rights in their world. So it depends on what kind of sin it is. But be sure of one thing. That God will not hold those things against you after he's forgiven you. There will be no consequences from God's perspective. and a marriage but he's a Muslim and he wants me to take his religion I come from a born-again Christian family and I don't know what to do he wants me to marry him I strongly believe in God and that he is the only God please tell me what to do I am confused you are not confused the point is you may be trying to confuse yourself because here you said God is blessing you with a man and a marriage and he's a Muslim meaning that he is not a Christian now God cannot be blessing you with a non-Christian to marry. Let me read something to you from the Bible. 
in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, reading from verse 39, it says, The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. Now, this is in a situation where a lady uh, was already married and then her husband died. So this is a widow. Now, and she wants to marry again. You know, because she's a widow, she's already, um, she's no longer under her husband. She's no longer under her parents. But now she wants to get married. So it's not parental instruction now. So what's she going to do? The Bible says she is free to be married to whom she will, except that it must be in the Lord. That means it must be a Christian. That means it must be guided by Christian principles. So it's just that simple. God can't say this one and then bless you with a non-Christian. Now, if you study the rest of that particular book, that whole chapter, you discover several things. Firstly, he explains to us that um, a man and a woman who are married, if one of them is not a Christian and wants to leave, he could leave. Then he says a brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. In other words, that person doesn't have to insist on the marriage. Can you imagine how seriously God takes being a Christian in a marriage? It's so important that God could let that marriage break just because one of them is not a Christian. So it tells you something. So it's not true that God is blessing you with a man and a marriage and the man is not a Christian. Definitely that blessing is not Jesus Christ blessing you. It's not a blessing. There's trouble about to happen. So you better be watchful and, and get out of it. Watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you.
you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.